Okay, so I am going to continue in trying to fix this. First things first is I need to remove these damaged resistors here. So I'm going to just try to grab onto that, melt the solder. Come on, buddy. Let me try the other side first. another way. Get this in here. Oop. Maybe not. There we go. And at this point I'm wondering if the soldering iron is hot enough. Melting regular solder when I was testing it, but maybe this stuff has a higher melting point. Okay, let's pause the video and I'll. Okay, so a little hotter soldering iron now, and I tested it and I was able to get that side out a little bit. Be more careful than I am. And then resistor is really hot. So now we're going to try this other side. Let's heat that up enough. And, oh, yep, there it goes. Boom. All right. So hopefully that'll teach you how not to do it and then how to fix what you're doing. You know, my uh, soldering iron has a temperature control on it, so I just turned it up a little bit and uh, hoping it's not too much. Again, I'm not a professional when it comes to soldering or anything, but I'm hoping this will help somebody out there that's also an amateur that wants to fix this. Now, let's get a zoom in on that, the uh, actual damage. Just look at that that look at all those scorch marks look at all this stuff see that amazing what happened there so anyway I'm gonna take this guy out off camera and then I'll uh, try to put it back in and replace it on camera all right so I am uh, I removed the other one and now I'm gonna try to clean off what I can from these capacitors. I honestly don't know if this stuff is damaging or not and I'm just using some rubbing alcohol. Highest percentage I could get I think the stuff I'm using is 99% isopropyl, isopropyl, isopropyl? I think it's isopropyl. Alcohol. So anyway I'm gonna clean this off the rest of the way just try to tidy things up and then solder on the replacement resistors. So now what we're going to do is grab our soldering iron and let me grab this, the pliers, so I don't burn myself. As soon as this goes in there it's going to get real hot. We'll do the long side first. Just know I'm going to horribly burn myself somewhere along here. Okay, so I'm heating this up, pushing it in. See that? We're going to, I'm at least going to try to push that in as far as it'll go. Oh, shoot. Let's get this other side in. Oh, that's just being really 
my stubborn. Check underneath. You know, it might be a problem. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Kind of pushing down and heating up from the bottom because it is kind of sealed off with the current solder that's in place. So I'm wondering if it needs a little coaxing get through that barrier. Come on. And then now I'm bending things, which isn't helping anything either. Straighten this out a little bit with the needle nose pliers. Okay. Back there. Gracious. And it's bent again. All right, we're going to have to come back to this. Okay. Trying this again. this clamped in. Should have done that in the first place, honestly. Seen something. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Finally. There we go. probably about where we want to solder it anyway. Okay, so now I can finally get those out. Clean off the soldering tip a little bit. 
I'm gonna put a little bit more flux on this right at the site. Again, this stuff burns off, so you should be fine with being relatively generous with it, and we'll wipe off the excess if it doesn't burn off in the end. Okay, and then my solder. Let's do this one first. Oop. I'm this here so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna do inside one first. Okay. Yeah, it looks okay. This guy here. Come on. There we go. Okay. There we go. Again, I'm not very good at this at all. This is like the third time I've soldered anything. So hopefully that'll work. We'll uh, trim off the edges or the ends with um, little clippers here. So what you do is like go down here and just trim decently close. Gosh, I don't know why I'm so shaky today. There you go. And now I'll just clean it up. All right, I'll put on the other one and we'll make another video. Okay, so next step is uh, this had, these resistors had some of this insulation tubing on there. It's the kind that just shrinks down under heat. So I went ahead and cut it to length to fit around both of these. See that? Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up trying to not heat up the capacitors too much. There are some chemicals in there and they can take a decent amount of heat, but you know, I'd rather not go too crazy. And if you saw that, they just shrunk right on there. Just a little bit more, make sure they're tight. We're good, this is just a heat gun. You could probably use a hair dryer on the high setting. Um, just probably take a little longer, but you should be okay. All right, so I just replaced them. I'm doing my meter here. These should be 6 ohm resistors. So if you look at the screen there, 6 ohms. Are you getting the screen? Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. So yeah, um, we should be good. We're going to try these out. Okay, so I'm putting this back together. Line up the holes there. Sure everything looks good. All right, just add something. All right, so I'm putting this back in first, since this was kind of an odd man out as far as the screws go. These all have little washers on them. You can see that at all. That went on top. So I'm going to be mimicking that. Always a good sign when the number of screws you have lines up with the number of holes you have. <laughs> Can't tell you how many times that's happened to me where I put everything together, I've spent hours, and then there is a screw still sitting on the bench. And I have no idea where it was supposed to go. Okay. curious this is but all right and then let's get this plugged back in to hear a snap this up here this little ribbon cable till that's in 
Again, be so gentle with all of these. I can't, like, they take a certain amount of force, but <laughs> uh, if you put the force in the wrong place and try to force them in when the, you know, the pins aren't lining up and stuff like that, you can do so much damage so quick. These, these connectors get really brittle after not too long, it seems like, and they just snap so easily. I've done that before. That really sucks. Okay. So that looks good. Yeah. All right. So all those are reconnected. At this point, I just need to flip this over and connect it back in. Let me put this. This was kind of a pain. This tape. I may have to fix this first. Of course, I don't even know how necessary this tape is, honestly. Seems like sometimes they just put this on here so it doesn't rattle around when it's being shipped. Okay. Oh, whoops. You know, funny enough, this model does not come with an exposed circuit board, so maybe, just maybe, I should be flipping this over. What do you think? Okay. All right. Now, I'll put these screws back in. Now, I know that I mix these screws a little bit. I shouldn't have but I kind of figured there's kind of a smaller hole and a bigger hole, and I kind of figured I'd be able to figure it out since there's only the two size uh, screws. There's bigger ones and smaller ones. So I'm gonna do the obvious big ones first. And in fact, I may just put in a couple of these, test this, and if it works, then I'll bother putting in the rest because it would really suck to spend all that time putting this all back together just to find out it needs more troubleshooting or that didn't exactly fix the problem. So. Don't strip your screws like that either. I'm getting I'm getting a little impatient. And that's not good. That would cause problems and can cause problems. Okay, I'm just going to leave that at that and test this out. Okay, so let's try plugging this back in. Sorry about the cup. Um, it's going to be the explosion test. We're going to see if it explodes after I put this in. not hearing anything or smelling anything which is a good first sign so I'm gonna unplug this again I'm gonna plug in a couple of the speakers and the control box and I'll come back okay here's the moment of truth it works before this these bottom three lights here were flashing I guess that's an error code. I'm not sure what the error code is, but when I looked it up online, it was those resistors kept coming up as the top thing to check. So, all right, let's uh, turn this up a little bit. I plug the speakers back in. Oh my gosh, they work. <laughs> Somehow we got this working. That is awesome. All right, so I am really hoping this helps somebody else. I, I don't remember what these retail for now, but I think when I bought them, they're around 300 bucks, two or 300. So, I mean, for four bucks of a replacement part that I got on eBay, that's not a bad fix. The labor, of course, is your own time, so you value that how you will, but that's still a pretty cheap repair in my book compared to 300 bucks. Thanks for watching.